how you guys how you guys welcome back welcome back to my youtube channel it is dana right here and i am back today with another word from the lord today is february 28th it is 3 50 p.m where i am right now and i do believe the lord wants me to upload this word on today welcome back to everybody who is new and welcome welcome back to everybody who is an og my name is dana ray once again and i am a prophetic voice and i am sent to share with you guys what the lord shares with me as well as to share my life with you guys um because my life is very much prophetic um so let's get into the word the title of this word is get yourself together dana the title of this word is you were misjudged be expectant stay faithful and help h-e-l-p the acronym um god has called me he has given me the words like for the word help um, so we're going to go through that and I'm going to share with you guys what the Lord shared with me. Um, I didn't wake up knowing that I was going to release a word today. Of course, I never do. God really kind of tells me like on the day of when I'm going to release. Um, I was out doing some, running some errands today, getting some things done. And um, I, I, on, it wasn't until on the way back, I was out for a while and it wasn't until I was on the way back from being out that the Lord let me see 911 and I'm like okay um I, I see I hear you he, that's all you had to let me see 911 one time and I'm like okay I hear you like I believe that you're asking me to release something and then I'm like okay Lord what do you want me to release because I have no idea like I had a couple dreams last night and I wrote them down but I don't understand them right now yet because God hasn't given me the interpretation so I'm like okay I know that can't be it but what is it that you want me to share um so I listened to Nina's word earlier because the Lord had me listen to her word earlier and she was speaking from the scripture in Luke excuse me she was speaking from Luke 1 and I'm like okay I knew the Lord had had me see Luke 1 and this certain scripture that I had highlighted um I think Luke 1 and 24 he had me see that multiple multiple times between last night and this morning so I knew that the word that he had me release from her was was for me so I was like okay so then when I'm getting here um, when I got home from running errands, knowing that the Lord had, Lord had wanted me to speak a word, but not knowing necessarily what he specifically wanted me to talk about, um, I sit down and I turn to Luke 1 again. And I'm like, okay, Lord, I know you told me to um, listen and that Nina's word was for me. Why are you having me flip to it again? And then he, he was like, didn't I give you a word on this a couple weeks ago that I had that I didn't have you release at the time? And I'm like, oh, okay. So you want me to talk about the same scripture, but you want me to talk about what you told me about it. So I'm like, okay, I get it. Because I'm like, okay, like, why are you having me still flip to the scripture again? And it was because he wanted me to speak on it again. Um, but from the way that he gave it to me. So the first part of this word that says you were misjudged comes from Luke 1. Um, so we're going to make this more clear. So on February, on February 8th, this year of 2024, the Lord had me see my spouse's initials with a number. Okay. And a lot of times when the Lord has me see my spouse's initials, he's getting my attention and he's wanting me to pay attention to whatever he's saying after that. It sometimes it re most of the time it relates to a word that he wants to give about marriage or he he's relating it to my spouse, something that I need to know or something that he's trying to speak when it when he's talking about marriage or my relationship with my husband. So when I wrote that number down, I looked it up in the Strong's Concordance and the word, the number was 2977. 2977 in the Strong's Concordance means privately or secretly. So that led me to the scripture in Luke that the Lord had continually had me see. So the scripture in Luke that has these words that the Lord wants me to share is Luke 1. And we're going to do Luke 1 and 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. So it was time for the birth of Jesus Christ. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. 
Then Joseph, her husband, being just a man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. Privately, there's the word. 2977 means privately in the Strong's Concordance. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. When Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord bid in him, and took unto him his wife. And he knew her not until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Okay, what God is speaking is that they did not know who you were. You were misjudged. At the time that God had you presented to your husband, to your spouse, to the woman, if this is a man, if you are a man watching, you were misjudged because they did not know who you were. They may have had an attraction to you. God may have shown you to them or just like had a light on you for some reason and they knew that there was something different or something special about you. But because they did not have the entire prophecy, because they could not hear God clearly, because they were not where they needed to be in their relationship with God or because God had merely not spoken to them fully about you yet you were misjudged joseph did not know the full prophecy about mary um carrying jesus so when he when she came up pregnant how are you pregnant and you're a virgin no ma'am this is not going to work i'm going to put you away privately because i'm a respectable man so your husband for example ma'am let me let you down softly um i'm not the one for you i don't know what you heard I don't know what you saying God told you. I don't know what you think this is. I don't know why you're confused, whatever, whatever, but this ain't it. Some of you have literally heard these exact words from your, the person that God told you was your spouse. Because you were misjudged. Oh, but God has given or will give or is going to give these people the revelation himself. He's going to let him know. This says, Joseph being raised from sleep did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took him to him, his wife. It said, while he thought on these things, while Joseph thought about what had happened, like he thought about like Mary, like being pregnant with this child, like what am I going to do? Like while your husband thought on whatever you, God told you to speak or whatever he was wondering about why do I see this person differently? Why does this person look like, why are they sticking out to me? Why can't I get them out of my head? Why do I keep having dreams about them? The angel of the Lord appeared in a dream and said, fear not take Mary as your wife for what I have put in her is from the Holy Ghost. What you are feeling about this person is from the Holy Ghost. What this person has spoken, what you are wondering about is truly from me. God has revealed, will reveal, is going to reveal the truth to your spouse about who you are. You were misjudged. Okay. And God allows all of this to happen for a reason, all of this to happen for a reason. And so the last scripture that we just read was, and he knew her not. So he did not sleep with her until she brought forth Jesus. And he called his name Jesus. Joseph gave the name to the promise. 
Mary knew about the promise first. Mary agreed to the promise first. Mary did not tell Joseph the promise. God told Joseph the promise. And when God told Joseph the promise, Joseph agreed. He got into position. He did what he was supposed to do. He, he got into his position to lead the family and he named their promise Jesus. Your husband, your spouse will get into position and they will take, um, they will do what is necessary to fulfill the position that God has chosen them for. They will do it. God will speak to them. God will let them know and they will follow suit. You have nothing to worry about. You were misjudged. All right. The next scripture for this part of the word, it comes from Jonah 3 and 10. And it says, when God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. A lot of your spouses have been in rebellion. But once they humbled themselves and once they turn to God and once they say yes God is going to forgive them God is going to see their hearts and God is going to restore them and they will not endure the destruction that God has shown you is planned out for them if they don't turn back it's going to be lighter for them. God is giving them a chance to repent. He is giving you a chance to repent. God will, he not always, but he will definitely show us if you keep going in this way, if you don't turn back now, if you don't obey me, this is what's going to happen to you. He will give you chance after chance after chance. And some of us get more chances than others because of his grace and mercy. And you will not have to endure what he said you have to endure if you turn from your evil ways. God is saying when they turn from their evil ways, he will be just to forgive them. So you should as well. Because you will not be able to receive them well if you have not forgiven them. Daniel 2 and 21 he changes the times and seasons. He disposes kings and raises up others. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the, dis dis the discerning. God decides when he speaks, when he wakes the husband up, when he wakes the spouse up. He decides when he wants to put that man into his position as king. He decides who he wants to be king. Many of your spouses and you, as you have been chosen by God to enter into this marriage are chosen by God to fulfill the purpose that he has shared with you. Other people are not going to see you as deserving, but God decides who he wants in what position, when and where. Not us, not your enemies, not your family, not nobody. God decides who he wants to, to um, connect you with as a spouse. He decides who he wants your divine friends to be. He decides where he wants you at in ministry. He chooses that. You have no control over what God calls and creates you to do. Your, um, your job is to obey. So do not get discouraged by people's opinions of what God says is yours where God told you to go and be, how he told you to speak. Because he changes the times and seasons. He says now is the time or not right now. God does. He disposes kings. He takes people out of positions and puts somebody else in there that is better fit for that position for that time. It's God's choice. Last scripture for this part. Colossians 4 and 6, let 4 and 6, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. When these people return, 
When people return from your past who have hurt you, who have disappointed you, who have slandered you, let your speech be with grace and season it with salt. God will tell you how to speak, what to speak, when to speak, when the time comes. But you must keep yourself submitted to him. Make sure that your heart is a heart of flesh and not a heart of stone so that you may be ready at the time when these people return. So that you will see them how God sees them and not how you used to see him or not or see them or not see them from the pain that they may have caused you in the past. Knowingly or unknowingly if they cause you this pain. All right. Second part. Be expected. Stay faithful. Be expected and stay faithful. So this part comes from um, when I was researching and looking up like, Lord, what is it that you want me to talk about today? Um, he had me flip to these scriptures. So I read this and I'm like, okay, I know you want me to um, read these scriptures and share these with your children. Um, so here I am. So this is, I think I need some water because my mouth is getting dry. This is Luke, Luke 12 and 35 through 48, Luke 12 and 35 through 48. So let's read that. The first section is uh, 12 and 35 through 40. And this part is titled the parable of the expectant steward. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. And ye yourselves liken to men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come, in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so blessed are those servants and this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through be ye therefore ready also for the son of man cometh at an hour when ye think not god is saying make sure to always keep your lights burning. Make sure to always be looking for what God has told you to wait for. Make sure that you are in position. Make sure that you are ready. Make sure that you have your loins girded. Make sure that your light is on. Your candle is burning because you do not know when the Lord is coming with your promise. You need to be checking the mail and looking out the window for the things that God has told you to expect in this season. And you know exactly what those things are. You will not know when God will come, but if you are always ready, you will be ready. Stay ready and stay expectant. The next part, parable of the faithful steward. And this is verses 41 through 48. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us or even to all? And the Lord said, who then is that faithful and wise servant whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find him so doing. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But, and if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens and to eat and drink and be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him and at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in asunder and put appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Let's hold it right here for a second because I know this language, the King James language gets a little rough. This is saying, blesses him who is ready, a faithful servant who is serving and treating everything that God has given them in a way that would be pleasing to God when God comes, when God sees them, when God comes to elevate them, 
transplant them, move them, transition them, whatever. Blessed is that person. But if a servant is like, oh, God is taking a long time. So let me go do these things outside of his real will right quick. Let me start mistreating the things that or the people that God has given me. Let me start mishandling the things that God has put into my hands. Let me start eating and getting drunk. Then when the Lord comes and find this person doing this, he's going to give the portion that was laid aside to him to an unbeliever. Because at that point, you are not a faithful servant if the Lord catches you in sin when he comes to give you your portion. You are not a faithful servant. And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall much be required. And to whom men have committed much, of them they will ask the more. If there is much in your hands, if there are many people attached to you, if you have been elevated, if you have been put in a position where people see you, where God has trusted you with some level of his people, of his sheep to lead, there is much required of you okay and if when the Lord comes with your promise with your thing and you are not in position an unbeliever will get what was supposed to be yours and you will be beaten with many stripes because you knew better God is very clear And we sit and we wonder like, oh, why did he, why was his punishment so intense? Because if you squander the position and the people that God has trusted you with, there is a bigger responsibility for those of you who have been called to lead. God is not playing in this season because the devil is also not playing. Be a faithful steward over what God has blessed you with. Because you do not know when he is coming to elevate you. You do not know when he is coming to give you the rest of your promise. You do not know the hour. So you must be ready and prepared and in his will at all times. Now is not the time to make mistakes. I hate to break it to you. There is grace and there is mercy. But right now, now is the time to be in God's will. Be expectant and stay faithful. We have, God has been, um, he's reminding me of words that I've released in the past that said, when your promise comes to pass and you look around and there are people that you thought would be walking into the same promises with you because they started with you, they will not be there because when God came with their promise, they were not found faithful. Do not assume you need to worry about yourself. You need to stay faithful. Don't worry about what you think people are doing over there and they did this and they still got blessed with their husband. Mind your business and you be faithful and steward what God has given you because you have to answer. Not other people, not them. You can't get up there into heaven or whatever and say, Lord, but you let them do this and you still gave them whatever. Um, that doesn't work. Okay? Be expected and stay faithful. All right, so the last part of this word comes from the word help. So on the same day that I saw the numbers and my um, husband's initials 2977, which we did what... Mm, can't even talk. Lord, give me the strength, which um, was the first part of the word about um, you, you were misjudged. This same day, I saw 998 and 998 
at the same time. Okay, so I wrote this in my notes, um, 998, 998, and I was like, okay, Lord, I'm going to look this up and see what it is that you're talking about. And not always when the Lord shows me a number is he talking about the Strong's Concordance. Now, let's get that out of the way. I assume that if you are here, if you are OG, and if you are a meat eater, that you would know that by now. I share what God shares. Like sometimes he's talking, about, he can talk about anything. He knows exactly how to speak to me and he does use numbers a lot, but it's not always the Strong's Concordance, okay? So um, anyway, I looked this up in the Strong's Concordance, these numbers and the numbers in the Strong's Concordance 998 means helping or a helper. It also means wisdom and understanding. So I'm like, okay, Lord, um, I get you. I understand. So I even had done some research on helper um, and the definition of the word um, that day, that same day that he was downloading the word about privately. Um, but the Lord didn't have me release it when I thought he would. So yesterday, I believe it was the 26th. Was that yesterday? Two days ago, the Lord had me see 998 and 998 at the same time again. So I wrote helper down um, in my notes again, not, not knowing that today the Lord would have me release a word. Okay. So that's how I got helper. But then the acronym H dot E dot L dot P dot, the Lord had me see that on an emergency vehicle today when I was out, um, in my, you know, doing my little travels or whatever today. And I'm like, okay, so so that's how I knew that he wanted me to, he was going to give me an acronym for the word help. Okay. So help Acts 20 and 35. Let me read the scripture first. It says, I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. All right. So initially when I was going to record this word, the phrase are you ready to help was part of the title. So technically that's where we're getting this word help from. He's saying, are you ready to be a helper as in your role as a wife in this marriage? Okay. This is what you are called to do as a helper, or these are some things that you are called to do as a helper. All right. So the H stands for healer. The H stands for healer. God has called you to help heal your spouse. You are to help heal their broken hearts. You are to help heal their broken identities. And you are to help them heal from physical sickness as a result of trauma that has been trapped in the body. So if you are walking into your marriage right now, God has been giving you explanations and understanding of what the person that he's sending you may be coming with, of what psychological issues, what mental um, stresses, what sins that they may have been a part of in the past has brought onto their lives so that you can know how to handle these things. So you can know how to help them break these chains off of them. So you can know how to treat them if, um, for lack of better words. So a lot of, some of your spouses are going to be coming with physical sicknesses that have spiritual roots, that spiritual sicknesses that are coming from them not knowing how to navigate or how to walk through or how to heal things that have happened to them from childhood, things that have happened to them in past relationships, people who have used and abused them, who have hurt them, the traumas and the abandonment and the rejection that they grew up with. These things have, have, um, been suppressed and suppressed and suppressed until they have started to manifest physically. They have started to manifest in physical issues, physical health issues that will not be healed if the root of the thing is not brought forward, is not healed. God should be showing you how to help them navigate these issues. You should be being educated right now on, okay, this person's coming to me with anxiety and depression. Anxiety and depression doesn't just show up. It's from something. There's a root. 
anxiety, depression then leads to overweightness. It then leads to not wanting to exercise. It then leads to um, sicknesses, heart issues, um, stomach in issues, ulcers, not being able to eat, not being able to use the bathroom properly, et cetera, et cetera. All these issues that are emotional end up being having physical manifestations if they get too far. How are you going to help your spouse if you are not being educated right now about what they need help with? You are called to heal, help heal their broken hearts through the love that God has given you to give to them. That means that as God has already been telling us, we will have to be healed from our own issues so that we can put this person's issues before us right now so that we can help them get to be the person that God has always created and called them to be. You cannot heal, help heal someone if you too still have a broken heart. That means that right now in your waiting, in your separation, you need to let God heal your own broken heart so you can help him heal your spouse's broken heart. Your delay is because you're not healed. God can't send you somebody broken if you're still broken. Because you are called to be a helper. You can't help what you have not allowed God to already fix in you. You don't have wisdom. You don't have knowledge. You don't have the education necessary to help somebody. If, you, if God has not first walked you through the same thing that you're helping someone else heal from. That's not right. It's getting dark, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's darkening. But anyway, we're going to keep going. So that's what you are supposed to be helping them heal. Broken identities, the things that the enemy has told them about themselves that are not true. You are to speak the opposite of that into them as much as needed. It may be every day. Husband, you are valuable. You're a king. I love you. You're so worth it. I'm so proud of you. Whatever it is that God tells you to speak into this man until they believe it. That means that it has to be done over and over and over. Past words that God has given me, he needs reassurance, more reassurance than normal. Because what replays in his mind are the negative things that people and the enemy have told him over years and years and years. So you have to fight that with positivity and it's not going to happen overnight. Are you ready for the process of healing that is going to be necessary in this marriage that God has called you to? Some of you are not. Healing does not happen overnight. You cannot expect to heal a lifelong trauma, 30-something years of trauma overnight in one year. Are you ready for the process that God has called you to? This is why you've been waiting because there has been patience that has been um, built up in you. Empathy that has been built up in you. E, E, E means elevate. You are being brought into their lives to bring them from a low place spiritually, mentally, and physically into a high place, okay? The anointing will flow once you all are both in the connection correctly, meaning right time, right place, divine timing, everyone's in alignment. That's when the oil will flow. This reminds me, or God kind of brought me, he made, well, when he said that about the oil flowing, because I've had some dreams about oil and my husband, um, like oiling my scalp and stuff like that, which they are going to be a part of another word. But God brought that to my memory to lead me to talk about David's anointing. So David became king approximately 10 years after he was anointed. So your spouses, as well as you, were anointed a long, long time ago for this position in ministry, for this position in marriage, for whatever God has called you to do, 
okay? But the anointing has not, will not, you, they will not walk into these positions until they are with you. The elevation does not come. The oil will not flow until they are in the divine marriage, the divine connection that God has ordained for them. They're, um, what do you always say? Something, whatever comes with your wife. I can't think of the word. Y'all, the word is so easy. Your favor, their favor comes with you. The man's favor, the husband's favor comes when he gets into connection with the wife. So the oil will not flow until he's in connection with you. He's already a king, but the oil will not flow until he's in connection with you. All right. So now I'm going to read through 1 Samuel 16. Um, and we're going to talk about when Samuel anointed David. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, how can I go? If, Saul's, if Saul hears about it, he will kill me. The Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one that I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, do you come in peace? Samuel replied, yes, in peace, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shammah pass, but Samuel said, nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons passed before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, the Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of brothers. From that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah. Okay. When, when Sam, when David was anointed, he did not automatically walk into being a king. There was a process that the Lord had to take him through so that he could be prepared to be king. Okay. These men, these kings have been in a process. Now it is time for them to take their position as king. The favor will not come until they are in alignment with God until the appointed time has come and they have come into union with you. Okay? Your job is to help elevate them. Elevate also means to raise or lift something to a higher position. Lift means exerting effort to overcome the resistance of weight. There have been things that have been fighting your husband from getting into their position as king. There has been tons of resistance. There have been counterfeits. There have been um, curses that have been put out on them so that they will not elevate into their position as king. The same things are keeping them from their marriage because with their marriage, they walk into their position as king. 
everything that they have faced has been a has been something that the enemy has sent to keep them from walking into their position because he doesn't want them into in their rightful position because their rightful position is a threat to the kingdom of darkness they need your help elevate also means promote you are called to help elevate your spouse l love l you are called to love them when god um because we talked about in love in the last word so god sent me to the mute to the lyrics of the song love by music soul child all right so here we go love so many things I've got to tell you, but I'm afraid I don't know how because there's a possibility that you'll look at me differently. Love, ever since the first moment I spoke your name, from then on, I knew that by you being in my life, things were destined to change because love, they knew from the beginning they were not clear as we said they misjudged you but there was something in them from the beginning that knew they loved you that knew you made forgive my lips y'all you made a change and impact in their lives from the very moment that god allowed you guys to connect whether he showed you each other on social media or in person whatever whatever ever since that moment neither of your lives have been the same love so many people use your name in vain love those who have faith in you sometimes go astray love through all the ups and downs of joys and hurt. Love, for better or worse, I still will choose you first. Many of us thought we knew what love was before. We have had no idea. This process is showing us true love. You are called to truly love your spouse. Through the ups and downs, joys and hurts, you will, better or worse, you will still choose your spouse because you will still choose God's promise. You will still choose God's choice for you. Many days I've longed for you, wanting you, hoping for the chance to get to know you, longing for your kiss, for your touch, for your essence. Many nights I've cried from the things you do, felt like I could die from the thought of losing you. I know that you're real with no doubts, no fears, or no questions. This is the revelation that has been brought to them here recently. Love, so many people use your name in vain. Love, those who have faith in you sometimes go astray. Love, through all the ups and downs of joys and hurt. Love, for better or worse, I still will choose you first. At first, you didn't mean that much to me. But now I know you're all I need. The world looks so brand new to me now that I found love. Every day I live for you and everything that I do, I do it for you. What I say, how I feel, so believe it's true. You've got to know I'm true. After God revealed that you were misjudged and they were wrong and what was put inside of you is from the Holy Spirit and what they have been feeling or wondering about is actually from God they know now that you are all they need. They see the world from a different perspective. They are living for the love of you because that love is from God. Because this love that is sent from God has healing properties. They need it. They cannot be, they cannot be or function without the love that God has given you for them. They cannot elevate. They cannot move forward. They cannot be king without the love that God has put in you for them. They now know that. Everything they do, they do for this love. Love. L. Last one, P. Protect. You have been called to protect, to keep 
safe from harm or injury, to cover or shield from exposure, to guard, which means to protect with vigilance and force against expected danger. You are to defend them from attack or from invasion. A lot of you have been called to a spouse that is connected to people who are trying to hurt them who are not happy about their decision to move forward with God. That may include you. That may include them having to break off relationships with them. They are not happy. They do not want to see your spouse live, much less live with a wife and a family and happy. This is why you have to be quiet. This is why nobody can know because there is a target on the back of your spouse and your union. And there are people who want to destroy them, literally kill them because of a, a spirit, a demonic spirit that is within them. They hate it. This is serious. You have to protect your spouse. Their lives depend on it. The life of this promise depends on it. Just as when um, Jesus was born and Herod had a, had a hit out to kill Jesus. And, and Joseph had to hear dreams from and move the family here and there as God had directed him to protect Jesus from death. This is the same thing that God, that, that you're walking into. You are called to help protect your spouse in this union from literal death. You have to move at the voice of God. You have to go where he says go when he says go. You have to be quiet. Ecclesiastes 4 and 12. I don't know what translation this is, but we're going to read it. A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Okay, two are better than one. They need your help in protection. Okay, some of these people that they have been tied up with think that they're alone. They have been so good at manipulating and controlling them for so long. They think that this person doesn't have anybody. But they don't know who God has positioned in the background. And they don't know that there's a three strand cord that they're fighting because God has told you to be quiet. But that three friend threats, three strand cord is necessary to fight the demons that are against your spouse. Are you ready to help? Last scripture that I'm going to read is um, Psalms 89 and 20 through 29. And this is how God sees your spouse. This is basically how God is wanting what he feels about this person. And I mean, just like he's felt like this about you, that's why he did so much work to get you where you are right now. God has a special assignment and he sees your spouse in a very, very special way. Psalms 89 and 20. I have found David, but God had me replace David with the name of my spouse. So you replace that with the name of your spouse or with your name, however God leads you. I have found David, my servant with my holy oil have anoint, have I anointed him with whom my hand shall be established. Mine arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of, weakness, of wickedness afflict him. And I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. But, but my faithfulness and my mercy 
<laughs> but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And in my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set his hand also in the sea and his right hand in the rivers. He shall cry unto me, thou art my father, my God, the rock of my salvation. Also, I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. My mercy will I keep for him forevermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. His seed also will I make to endure forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. These are the promises that God has made to your spouse or to you if God is saying that this portion is for you. God thinks highly of the people that he has had you standing and waiting for. So when all these instructions come out about how you are to be a helper, how you are to be as a wife, your responsibility is because God sees the heart of these sons. He sees the heart of these spouses. And this is the promises that he has for them. Anything, any enemy that comes against him will not succeed. It says, and I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. The people who are, are coming against your spouse, who are also in unison coming against this union, but they have no idea that they're, there's something way bigger that they're coming against. They think they're just coming against a person. They have no idea what they are up against because they have no idea that you are standing with them. They have no idea of the role that you have been called to play. You are the reason why they are still living and breathing. God does not call us to stand and help and fight and fast for people who don't need it. Take your role seriously. Take your role seriously. It's not a game. It's not a game. The enemy is trying at every moment where he can sneak in and take your spouse or you out. Because this person hasn't had anybody standing and warring and praying for them. Okay. All right. So let's go back over the title right quick. You were misjudged. Be expected. Stay faithful. Help. H-E-L-P. I will see you guys the next time God sends me back. Sorry about the lighting. Sorry. I didn't feel like really in my element in this word. So I hope that the Lord speaks and I hope it's good enough. Um, and I will see you guys the next time God sends me back. Bye. Love you guys.